Hey everyone, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be the cozy fall book tag. I will be linking down below the original video and the original creator, and I will be answering questions about books during the fall. I was starting to film in that corner, and I know I have the little ghost decoration, but like, how could I not have this in the background? Like, I needed to switch things up. So, I will be answering questions, book stuff, very cozy, definitely prepare some tea. I've already drank mine. We're going to go back to mugs. <laughs> in a bit, but let's start with the book questions, right? So, question number one, crunching leaves. The world is full of color. Choose a book that has red, oranges, and yellows on the cover. Okay, I tried to focus on books that I've read somewhat recently, the year, last year or two, and I feel like the one that has all three colors would have to be The Threads, The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab. This is a book that is coming out, I think it just came out actually, and this is kind of the follow-up to the Shades of Magic trilogy by the same author, and I feel like that book was so popular, that series was so popular when I first started watching and then doing booktube videos, and this is the follow-up, you're following whatever was left over from the first series, I'm trying to be vague to not spoil anything. So some of the same characters, and then you're following uh, new ones, which I really like one of them, she can see the threads of power hence the title. Uh, in that world, I really like the magic system. It's based on fire, air, earth, these kind of classic things. But there's a few twists, and there are also four different types of uh, London. The red London, there's black London, white London. Very few people can travel between the worlds. I'm being vague because I feel like the world is, in my opinion, the best part. I was attached to characters in the first series, <laughs> and I feel like I lost interest in the third book, if you, if you know, you know. And I am back to being invested because of one of the new characters in the new series. So I would recommend it. There's a little bit of LGBTQ plus representation. The romance is not too, too heavy. But I'm curious to see what people will have to say about the new series because some of the characters are still annoying me. <laughs> The cover definitely has all the colors. I have read other books this year that do have these colors specifically, but I feel like it's more of a mix in this one compared to the other ones. But quickly, just because it's fun, uh, I have read words that I can't say. Uh, also, yellow face and butts, a backstory. <laughs> all three very yellow. The last one has a bit of orange too. Also, Fort Wings is pretty yellow too. So you know, a few yellow books. Orange, I, I don't have that many orange books. Pen Pal is kind of in between, and you have Toxic Positivity that has both, but yeah, that's pretty much it. The rest is like a few red ones, like The Maid, don't recommend. Jade War, which was amazing, but it's straight up red. So the only one that is a good answer would have to be The Fragile Threads of Power. Question number two, cozy sweater, which is definitely my favorite thing ever. I need new sweaters. We're going to go back to that, the last question. I'm getting ahead of myself. I get too excited. Sweaters. You have no idea how many times I've been trying to say that sentence. Um, the accent is just accenting. It's finally cold enough to don warm, cozy clothing. There you go. What book gives you the warm fuzzies? Lucky for me, I have finally discovered that I do enjoy the cozy fantasy warm books. It's definitely very recent. I feel like the last year is definitely where it's been for me. Before that, that was basically just Becky Chambers. That was pretty much it. But I just finished, it's right here, might as well talk about it, uh, Garden Spells, which I've been calling this Practical Magic 2.0, basically what it is, because you have sisters, you have domestic violence, you have uh, witches, small town, people not, you know, really liking them because they're witches, and uh, romance, which not usually my thing, but I'm on board. I really enjoyed this. Definitely very cozy vibes. Um, we're just gonna ignore. Is it Charlie? Yeah, it is Charlie. No, it's Chunky. Really? You're usually a good baby. So yes, definitely the cozy vibes for this one. Um, also, I would say Bone Dust, Bookshops and Bone Dust, which is coming out in November, the first sentence, <laughs> the first week of the month. And I really, really enjoyed this. I was lucky enough to get the arc. This is the prequel to Legends and Lattes, as you can probably guess from the cover. I did prefer the first book, I'm gonna be honest, but it's a prequel, it's still cute. Uh, you have the main character, she's 18, she was harmed uh, during battle, she's left to heal in this small little town close to the beach. And things happen. There's a bookshop. I feel like you include a bookshop. I'm sold. I will read the book. You do get the cozy vibes, but not as much as Legend Latte, so I would recommend that one first, but if you can't get enough want more, you can definitely check out the prequel that's coming out. 
I think it's the 7th of November, something like that. Question number three. Fall storm. The wind is howling and the rain is pounding. Choose your favorite book or genre that you like to read on a stormy day. Mystery thriller. Are there... Is it possible to have a different answer? Horror, fine, but like, that's basically it, right? <laughs> if there's something else for you, please let me know. Um, but, I mean, cozy would work too. I, I will allow that. So, small town is definitely a thing that works for me, no matter what the genre. But again, murder mystery, absolutely. I do really like Megan Miranda for that. Her best book is definitely All the Missing Girls, which I've read a couple of years ago. So, really, I'm contradicting myself with the, like, recent books. But that's her best one. Uh, I just finished... I mean, just is a bit of a stretch, but I just finished The Only Survivors, which I apparently disagree with the reviews online. People are just so-so about it. I think this is one of her best ones. So, murder mystery, kids that were on a trip with school, the bus, they weren't actually bus, those big cars, whatever, uh, fall into the river, survivors, it comes back to haunt them years later. I enjoyed it. So, murder mystery, small town, absolutely. Like, it's creepy, but it's not too creepy, you know? That's perfect. It's not going to keep me awake at night, which is what I want. Uh, if you want something a little wholesome, I also read In the Company of Witches. I will continue to read about that one too. Again, a little bit, like, I, I say a little bit Gilmore Girl because the main character is running a uh, bed and breakfast with her family. So, her two aunts, so like, and they're witches. So like, Sabrina, <laughs> the teenage witch, even though she's not a teenager. I'm trying to compare too much, but if you like witches, and you like cozy murder mystery, although again, it's a murder. Do you not think they're cozy? I 100% think that cozy murder mystery is a thing, but small town witches, um, it's a lot about grief and family and like secrets, but I really liked it. There's a second book and I asked my library to get the audiobook so I could continue. <laughs> and last but not least for that category, if you want something horror. I'm not, I'm not a big horror book reader, but I just finished that one and I needed to give it another shout out. This is my best friend's exorcism. This is the best cover of the year. I'm already telling you. It doesn't matter what I read this year. This is most likely going to be the winner when I do the video. Uh, but yes, this is amazing. This was fun. Four high school girls that are friends uh, go out at night on drugs. And um, one of them comes back after disappearing for a little while and she might be possessed. <laughs> I didn't think this was going to be as fun as I found it. Uh, there are definitely a few scenes that were disturbing, as you would expect from a horror book. Uh, but yeah, overall, I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to trying something else by the author. But I mean, if it's dark, like right now, I don't know how I'm going to deal with the lighting. Hopefully it's going to be okay, but it's raining right now. It's super dark. It's been dark so early already. So yes, would recommend that one for that. Number four, cool, crisp air. What's the coolest character you'd want to trade places with? I don't read the right books for that. <laughs> the majority of the books that I read are very dark, so I would never want to be in anyone's shoes, because let's be real. I used to have like a big phase also of like post-apocalyptic, which like, I'm the first one to tell you, I do not want to survive the apocalypse. I will, so quickly, so quickly. I, I don't want to <laughs> survive it at all. Listen, I'm not built for it, okay? L let's just admit it. So we're gonna go with something cozy and uh, I'm gonna go with a psalm for the well built or just probably the second book I thought was even better. You're following this uh, non-binary monk that is trying to find a meaning for their life. Gwyn Forrest makes friend with a robot and it's just chill tea traveling. It's, you know, this is what I want. This is what I want. Add some books in there and I'm also... <laughs> But yeah, nothing else. Nothing else. Just Becky Chambers. Number five, hot apple cider. What underhype book do you want to see become the next biggest hottest thing? I don't feel like I read that many books that are that underrated. That's definitely something I want to work on. I feel like I read older books that used to be popular that you don't see that much on booktube. But I'm trying, I'm trying. I think the most underrated one that I had read that is now becoming more of a thing would probably be... Um, I, who have never known men, I have raved about this book <laughs> so much, and I will continue to do so, okay? We're, we're gonna talk about it in my best books of the year because I read it in French this year, so, like, it's different from last year in English, right? Right. Um, but that's definitely one of the ones that I feel like I read it before it got more popular. Uh, even if you compare on Goodreads, the first, first time I had looked at it, it had definitely under 10,000 ratings, like, probably closer to 5,000, and right now it's 24,000. I would like to believe that 
a lot of it is because of us, because why not? It's an older book, by the way. It was published, I want to say 80s. Let me double check. 90, 95, 95. So I would like to believe that if it gained over 15,000 new ratings out of nowhere 30 years later, probably due to some hype on booktube. So yeah, that's definitely one of the ones that were underrated and I still think that it is and I want everyone to read it. I've been making people in my life read it. So it's so short. It's like less than 200 pages. You have 40 women. You're following the youngest one. Uh, they were locked underground in this cage and they have no idea what happened, how the youngest one doesn't even remember what it is to be living outside of that. One day something happens, doors are left open and it's hit or miss. People are going to love this or hate it. You don't get all the answers. It's definitely more about exploring. It's very much of a like speculative fiction kind of book, which again, not usually my cup of tea, but this was so good. I, I need to stop. I know. I know. <laughs> so we're going to go with something else. Uh, I don't think she's underrated. I'm trying to start with all the ones that are not my real answer, just because more books, why not? Uh, but Dawn by Octavia E. Butler. I don't think Butler is underrated or unknown or anything, but I feel like she still deserves more hype. She was one of the first, I think she was the first black woman to be able to live off of her work, which, you know, uh, again, that was, that I want to say was in the 80s. <laughs> why am I so stuck in the 80s? 87. Okay, not crazy. But this is my favorite series by her. This is the Xenogenesis trilogy. It's first contact with aliens. It's definitely going to make you uncomfortable, but she was way ahead of her time. In the second book, which not a spoiler, uh, there's even a mention of like microplastic, which like, I know it, it was known, but like, you don't think that it's been known for that long, right? 40 years. But this was fantastic. I can't stop raving about it. And on, again, Goodreads, not that it is, you know, the proof, but there's less than 50,000 ratings on it. So it still gives you an idea that I genuinely think she deserves more hype. She's just such a fantastic author. She's one of my favorite authors. I'm trying to read everything she has ever written. And like I said, this is my favorite series by her. I just could not put it down. I love it. Hopefully you will love it too. And I just feel like you don't hear enough people talk about her considering how good she is. Th that's all I need to say. Now, my real answer. I have two fantasy books to talk about, which is weird because I feel like I haven't been reading that much fantasy. I'm going back to it this year and I'm loving it. Uh, the first one is A Master of Jinn. I really enjoy that one and it's fairly recent, so I don't know if that really counts as like underrated, but I want this to get more hype. It's like murder mystery in a fantasy world, which I think works really well. Uh, you do have magic with the djinns, you're following this main character, she works closely with the police to try and solve this murder and things are really interesting. I really enjoy this. Uh, a lot of you told me that there are a bunch of short stories that go with this standalone and they're even better. So I'm looking forward to trying those, but this deserves more hype. And my real, real answer, bear with me, Jade City by Fondoli. Um, I know the first book is popular, but again, if I look on Goodreads, uh, the first book I think has almost 50,000 ratings, but the other ones only have like 20, 25k. And this is such a good series. I cried. Okay. I, I'm just going to say it. The last book broke me. The first book I thought hurt. The rest destroyed me. And yeah, I read the first book a couple years ago. So I guess I'm part of the problem, but this year I read book two and three and so worth so much more hype. So good. I haven't been this attached to characters in a fantasy series in a while. I just, that family, it's essentially <laughs> magic. Um, so people have uh, capacity to use jade to use magical powers and you're following essentially two families that are fighting over the control of the city and oh, oh the pain the pain but so good so so good so yes I want more people to read the first book and then continue don't be like me don't be like everyone else on Goodreads read this uh number six coats scarves and mittens the weather has turned cold which it has and it's time to cover up What's the most embarrassing book cover you own that you like to keep hidden in public? Okay, um, I feel like I used to not care about covers and booktube got me, okay? Instagram too. I love pretty covers now. It's your fault. Uh, I used to buy, I still buy most of my books, <laughs> most of my books used, but now when I have read the book and I liked it and I see a pretty edition, I do get it. 
I used to not do that. Now I do. I did that. You know what? Let's talk about that because that's the best answer. Octavia E. Butler. I bought these combined editions, which is like three or four books all in one. Why would I buy three, four books when I can buy one, you know? Especially for library sales, they're like a dollar each. So like one dollar instead of four? Yes. Um, but now that I have read, especially again, the Xenoshares series, I just started accumulating all the other editions because this one is so much prettier than whatever this is. And I think the worst one is the other series. I think it's the Paternist Paternist series. This cover. It looks like a religious... A lot of you told me that. It looks like a religious book. And trust me, trust me, you know, there's a lot of incest. Which that is not selling the book, but like, it's like people with superpowers and like, it, it's really good. So weird. The first book was tough to go through, uh, but I've read the first two books now. I do need to continue. It's I'm almost done with all her books, and it's a pain. I, I don't want to finish. So, but yes, uh, her books are probably the worst covers I had. I'm switching them up, like I said, so it shouldn't be you know forever that bad, but still. And I think that the most embarrassing because it's kind of funny, but like I'm not embarrassed pretty much ever. So, but Ice Planet. <laughs> If I were to read that in public, I know, I know someone would see me and be like, I know what you're reading right now, and the fact that you're reading that in public. <laughs> it's like when I would see people read Fifty Shades of Grey in public, I would be like, like, it's fine that you're reading that, but in public? That's a choice. Um, that's a choice. Um, <laughs> so yes, these are probably the most embarrassing covers, but again... I don't think I'm trying to look if I've read anything else that was like really bad but do they mean bad in terms of like I don't want people to know I'm reading that or like bad because the cover is really ugly either way I think these are my best answers at least for the books that I've read so far this year I finished like 88 books this year so there are a few more that I just didn't finish but these two are definitely <laughs> the worst moving on pumpkin spice What's your favorite fall time comfort food? Does tea count? Because I want to talk about tea. Uh, I feel like that's... We're going to go on a tangent here and just talk about fall stuff that I like. Because we were talking about sweaters earlier and like... But if we're going to talk about tea, I mean chai in general. Like I, I will drink a bunch of different ones, but chai is just a classic. Actually, just before that I was drinking the Celestial Seasoning Chai one. The, the one with the tiger on it. It's a classic. Okay, um... <laughs> Yes, that's what I was drinking. And uh, let me show you some mugs because I'm such a mug girly, which, by the way, don't recommend calling your cats silly names because then it becomes something that you can't stop saying. Because I started saying girly because of Claudia. I keep calling her girly pop for some reason. And now I, I'm a book girly. I'm a tea girly. It's, you're gonna have to bear with me. So, tea, mugs, look at that. So this one with the little, it's dusty, okay? I need to like, <laughs> I just brought them out uh, from um, storage because gotta rotate the mugs, okay? Uh, so yes, mushrooms, of course. Speaking of mushrooms, you also have this one. So cute. I believe they have one with birds and one with, is it flowers or insects? Um, so I'll link those if you're interested. I also saw the ones from uh, Anthropology, which are so cute. Let me put one. There's one with a squirrel, and I've thought about it since last year, about buying it. But the one thing that has made me not pick it up is the handle. It looks so awkwardly small. And like, the handle is so important. I, but gorgeous, gorgeous. And this is the most recent one I've gotten. And I've had a debate if this counts as a fall mug. I think it does. I don't care that it has no fall like leaves or anything, it's fall because you can see the trees, which now I'm having a blank, what you call that in English, pines, uh, the, the, the Christmas trees, the <laughs> les conifères, les sapins, les pins, conifères, I don't know, um, but look at this, there's a fox, so of course I needed it, and for some reason this is giving me strong fall vibes, I guess you could say summer too, but this is fall to me, so mugs all of the mugs and also candles in general which i just noticed this is from ikea by the way um yes i need to put a little uh candle in there and use it although i have cats so i don't know <sighs> only when i locked him out of the room but yes candles in general 
I am a big fan of Bath & Body Works candles, or just to be honest, it's been like three years since I've sniffed a candle in the store. So I would love to hear your favorite scents for fall because I'm in the lookout for more. I'm trying to not go overboard because again, cats, you can't see it, but I have Chunky pushing me. Um, but my all-time favorite scent is 100% Autumn. I have raved about that candle scent and I will continue to do so because it's such a mild, inoffensive scent. Like I've never heard anyone say they don't like that scent and now that I've said that out loud, I know someone is gonna, I don't like it. It's inoffensive. I always say that it's like walking outside in the forest with a hint of apple. It's just, and the other one, everyone loves the mahogany teakwood one, the sexy man one. I like mahogany apple so the sexy man eating apple also a classic would recommend but yes i would love to hear your favorite ones because i want to know also sweaters again that's definitely not the question but like let's just chat about fall stuff because yes sweaters i love a good sweater um i feel like you've seen my collection <laughs> over the year right now i'm wearing just this pj because i want it to be comfy um but yes fall sweaters where do you buy your cutest sweaters? Because I've seen some pretty ones. I had seen these ones from that brand. They're really expensive, but like, I thought they were really cute, but I couldn't find one that was cute and that didn't contain polyester or acrylic. I think, I think it was polyester. Listen, I'm at that age. I'm officially old in a good way because I look at the material <laughs> for my clothes. Listen, I can't stand polyester and acrylic, okay? If it's a really cute shirt and it's not too expensive, I will get it. But if I want like, pieces that will last me, which again, I feel like I'm at that phase in my life now. I'm going to try to avoid them. So I can pick any. And I actually started looking at Old Navy and The Gap, but mostly Old Navy. I feel like they have good deals online. Again, like if you just want like a basic sweater for work or something, you can get some with cotton or like wool or like merino, mer merino wool. But I want to know, where do you buy your sweaters? Because I've seen some really pretty ones. But I want to know if they're worth the hype. Like, I've seen people buying things from, like, Cezanne. They have really cute sweaters. Or, uh, what was the other place? Everlane? Is it worth it? Because they seem to have cute basics that had, like, great materials. So, last but not least, let's talk about lipstick. Because, just one, just one. This isn't a beauty channel. But I miss it. So, I wanted to talk about what I'm wearing right now. Because I've been getting so many questions. And it's CoverGirl. It's a lip balm, tinted lip balm. This is the color uh, Bliss You Mary, which you can build up the color if you want to. Uh, it's the dupe for the Clinique one, which I can't remember the name of, that this was the color that Liv Tyler wore whenever she was playing Ahwen in um, Lord of the Rings. And if I can do anything to look a hint more like her, of course I will. So yes, this is a dupe. And I don't know, it's CoverGirl. It's really cheap. It's really comfortable. It wears nicely. And I've been getting so many compliments and questions in my videos. So if you see me looking like that, it's this. That's it. I feel like we went <laughs> on a tangent there. But hey, more things to talk about during the fall. Again, love to hear your answers to the questions or my own questions because I want to know where are the good sweaters and what are your favorite scents of candles? Best mugs too, actually. <laughs> That's gonna be it for today's video. Let me show you a kitten because they are now piled up. This one is at my feet. Hi, baby. Oh my gosh. She loves being woken up. And this was behind me the whole time. <laughs> so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thumbs up, subscribe. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out. And I will see you in the coming video very soon. Bye.